One of the most asked questions under each of our videos is why we still rely on USB 2.0 for certain audio interfaces in our product lineup. While the whole industry seems to slowly but steadily switch over to faster and supposedly more modern transmission protocols such as USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt, RME still implements USB 2.0 over 10 years after the introduction of the first professional multi-channel USB audio interface, the Fireface UC. But higher bandwidth automatically means lower latency and better CPU performance, right? So why is RME still going down the USB 2.0 route? Numbers first. Surprisingly, audio data by itself isn't a very demanding nor resource-intensive data stream. To transmit a digital 24-bit 44.1 kHz stereo audio file, you need a bandwidth of 2116 kilobits per second, or in other words, 2 Mbit, only a tiny fraction of what Thunderbolt with 40 GB per second is capable of. Even a stereo 24-bit 192 kHz file, which is the highest resolution of the PCM format, needs only 9216 kilobits per second, around 9 Mbits. Calculating these numbers is very easy. The formula is sample rate times bit depth times number of channels. USB 2.0 has a bandwidth of 480 Mbits per second or 480 million bits per second. In theory, this would give us a maximum channel count of 240 stereo channels at 44.1 kHz and around 53 stereo channels at 192 kHz. This calculation is quite unrealistic because it leaves out the control data and other bits necessary. With professional, low latency interfaces such as the MatiFace Pro, and the MatiFace USB, RME proved that channel counts up to 140 channels are possible just with USB 2.0. The key ingredient to this groundbreaking success are custom-developed RME USB drivers that prove not only to be extremely efficient, but also very reliable. Professionals around the world use our USB interfaces every day in very critical environments. Even though, in the beginning, USB 2.0 was considered to be unreliable and not professional at all. Now, with all this knowledge gathered, it's quite clear why USB 2.0, from a technical standpoint, is perfectly fine for most interfaces. But why was USB 2.0 so important for the industry and why do we still believe in it? A long way to go. Because of the small data size and relatively low technical hurdles, broad digitization of the audio world started already in the early 90s, where transmission standards such as ADAT, MADI, AES and SPDIF became very popular. Despite the early adoption of all these standards in RME products, a universal and trustworthy standard for transmitting the data to the computer was still missing. Sure. PCI was powerful enough to do high multi-channel recordings, but it was expensive and not very flexible. With the introduction of the Fireface 800 and Multiface 2 in the early 2000s, RME delivered a powerful yet portable solution for many musicians and studios. For the first time, professional multi-channel recordings were possible with a consumer-oriented transmission protocol. But Firewire was not supported by every computer manufacturer and soon became obsolete. Hence, a new, better supported and more universal standard was necessary. In 2009, RME released the Fireface UC and proved again that low latency and superb audio quality are independent from the chosen connector. Even today, USB 2.0 seems to be the perfect choice. It's inexpensive, widely accepted, has enough bandwidth and will be supported for years to come. Bigger doesn't always mean better. When people talk about the benefits of USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt, they believe that the bandwidth of these newer standards has an impact on the data travel speed and therefore results in lower latency. But in reality, 
the actual speed that the data travels at is still the same. The only thing that changes is the number of channels that can be transmitted at the same time. To put it this way, going from USB 2.0 to USB 3.0 is like driving on a motorway with more lanes, but the speed limit remains the same. There are more cars on the road, but they get to the destination just as quick as everyone else. That is why we implemented Thunderbolt and USB 3.0 only in the UFX Plus, an interface with over 180 audio channels. It is true, Thunderbolt has, in theory, some advantages due to direct memory access called DMA, which bypasses the CPU. But real-world benchmarks show that our USB 2.0 and 3.0 interfaces are just as capable as the UFX Plus with Thunderbolt. To conclude, no matter what RME interface you have, you'll always have a professional low-latency interface. Thank you for watching.